The commander of the alien war strolled amid the aftermath of his assault. The city's destruction was a calculated gamble taken to subdue the rebellious monkeys. While his people had intentionally raised them, the Empire's inability to control them had allowed them to become tainted with repulsive ideals and beliefs. Primate coughed, splattering scarlet blood over the floor between them as he turned to see. Foolish monkey. Redundancies for resistance were always ingrained in your DNA, even if you should have perished. The ape looks up and speaks despite its discomfort while holding out a little communication gadget. Shithole alien, why did you attack me? With a laugh, the alien turns on his translator so this ape can comprehend him. Because you monkeys were unlucky enough to cross your threshold without, ironically, destroying yourselves. With a growl, he advanced on the expiring primate while grasping his spear firmly. We brought your terrible kind into the earth, but when it was time for your threshold to be lifted up and made into a slave, we had other things to take care of. We will now either use force to subdue you or eradicate you as a failed seeding. So are we really crops, creatures that you may use and discard as you see fit. Why not give us an opportunity to become friends with the stars and continue to communicate with us? Through bleeding teeth, the primate expresses how its fortitude and fortitude are gradually eroding. Friends, giggles the alien. Would we allow you to believe that you are equal? Do you really think that the empire adheres to your deplorable ideas of democracy and egalitarianism? He raised his spear, then paused, enraged by the primate's vile stare. Do you really believe you can beat me? You are genetically and bred for bludged in battle, but you have remained in complacency and peace, which makes your species failures. Take a look at your world and tell me whether you believe that achieving equality and peace will lead to power and success. The primate, its body at its final legs, laughs in agony and coughs and wheezes. Which is funnier, the fact that you believe you can defeat us or not, or the fact that, believing this to be our center of power, you assaulted the world's most tranquil city. With a smirk, the primate said, Ladies and gents, fuck him up for us, and make them regret attacking Tokyo, as it turned the communication device towards itself. The primate utters these words just before he dies. Shortly after, the alien started to receive notifications about incoming weapons from seven directions, two of which were nuclear, Additionally, his ground forces stationed at the city's boundaries were under constant fire from all directions, and three of his six cruisers in low orbit were struck by kinetic weapons powerful enough to disable their shields. Had he been mistaken, did they never cross their threshold, and were all their attempts at achieving peace only a means of postponing their ultimate self-obliteration? If that's the case, what had he let loose? His opportunity to respond to his queries was cut short when a blue star adorned missile struck him, taking his life, and a ship from a small country managed to include the leader of the invading aliens among its few but significant list of casualties. As the five officers and the tech thralls of his bridge worked to get ready for their last FTL leap to the backwater system, where his brother had vanished, the alien commander reclined back on his throne. This backwater, PS 328C, was known to him. It was a Class V Deathworld system that was seeded with a race of primates known as War Thralls for use in boreal combat, which added to the mystery around the urge to see how his sibling was doing. It is startling, at most, and suspicious at least, that this backwater is demanding his brother go dark when he has already succeeded in harvesting no less than 600 races. He turns to face the officer in charge and uses his station's power to talk with him after seeing some misunderstanding at the sensor station. Being in control means he must find out why. Lieutenant Wastik, what's wrong with your tech thralls? The lieutenant turns around, looking uncertain and perplexed. Sir. Our entry point is registering 40 arrival signals. Echoes indicate that the arrivals are coming from PS 328C. Who would venture this far within our empire? He bellowed, 
wanting to know whatever enemy of the Empire would be so blatant. Sir, we're not sure. Out of the forty, we can only positively identify six as belonging to your brother's ships. The lieutenant answered, showing a little more panic. Sitting up, he spoke out loud as his mind raced with thoughts. His brother would have followed procedure and dispatched a single data runner to deliver a message, so he wasn't going to take any risks. He gave the command, deploy all wings and prepare for combat, as he watched the tactical screen display his fleet of six cruisers along with the approach zone of the unidentified boats. When the unknown ships arrived, the tactical screen attempted to match them to known ships in the galaxy and identify their transponders, but it was having trouble. It seemed as though the shipboard AI was having trouble processing the data until it abruptly clicked, revealing the names of the unknown ships. He had no idea what a Tokyo was, why it was angry, or why Hiroshima and Nagasaki need a second coming. However, the renaming of his brother's ships, the Golden Ark became Fool's Gambit, and the Black Reach became Idiot's Resolve, made his fury boil. The communications officer spoke out before he could order the disrespectful upstarts to be destroyed. Sir, we are receiving hailed. Make it happen, he responds, curious to learn which of the other cosmic powers he would be directing his fleet on next. Let's see which enemy has new ships to their arsenal. He did not, however, anticipate seeing the face of a primate battle thrall from PS 328C, or that the signal was coming from a spacecraft that was just half the size of his. The primate, wearing a crude pressure suit of some kind, grinned widely before speaking, the computer deciphering its words in real time. Its canines and row of sharp incisors were visible. From Earth, greetings. We hate to notify you that you are about to enter United Earth territory. It is advised that you reverse course and request the deployment of an embassy from your homeworld. Even with my brother's fleet on your side, foolish monkey, your fleet is no match for me. Give up and we'll spare over half of your people. His rage boiling at these thrall race for having the audacity to tell them what to do. He snarled back. The primate responded very instantly, surprising the calm bridge staff by implying that they too had real-time translation software. Apologize, but did you really say brother? With a fresh expression, its eyes narrowed and the computer read the facial expressions as hatred the way this primate's demeanor had changed at the mere mention of his family surprised him a little, but he chose to brush it off. You have no care about the illustrious bloodline of my family, monkey. Give up and I'll carry out my responsibilities with mercy. The primate scowled and turned its head away, but before it could speak again, it turned back and said, I'm supposed to give you two more chances to turn around or give up. If you don't, that's going to be viewed as an aggressive act and will be reciprocated in kind. You, you dare T L L M E T O L E A V O R S U R R E N V E R. With a howl of rage, he let out that these primates were taking advantage of his thin patience and were now acting as if they were on par with him. Last chance, give up or reverse course and go. You have two hours to comply after which failure will be seen as a complete declaration of war with the purpose to obliterate United Earth and its territory, to which your empire will respond in like. Watanabe out, the primate said, cutting off the hail, and the spacecraft arranged against him began to display power spikes as they got ready to battle. He was astounded and shocked that a thrall race would dare to ignore him and disregard his heritage to the extent that he was as he watched at the show. With a cold, spiteful snarl, he gave the following commands while keeping an eye on the tactical display. Demolish them all, move quickly, and allow no one to escape. His bridge staff went to work, launching the routine assault patterns designed to deflect his cruisers as they approached the attack range. His tail wagged rapidly, eager to see the monkey's pitiful ship and his ears perked up, excited about the impending bloodbath. However, the abrupt hit on his spacecraft threw him down, and he felt the motion dampeners absorb the abrupt deceleration in time to save his life. 
Upon glancing up at the ship's condition panel, he saw that all of his reverse engines had been ruined. Furthermore, fifty shield crafts used as escorts arranged in three rows were little more than floating trash. What the fuck happened just now? He got back up and yelled. We are bleeding atmosphere in decks 3 to 11. We lost our reverse engines, and we were hit by three kinetic weapons, sir. With a panicked voice, the engineering officer responded, hurriedly sending his mental uplink to the damage control crews. Sir, they made a shield reactor hit. It's not online. When a blow to his main reactor caused his spacecraft to explode in a ball of plasma, he was trying to scream. With her command of a defensive installation on a shipping lane, she had an otherwise dull view of the control station. But as more and more Reaper and war fleets vanished in the far corners of the Empire, she noticed a flurry of activity over there. According to Strategic Command, the Virilias were responsible. However, she never trusted orders and instead paid attention to the rumors and chatter of the passing businessmen. The rumors were rife that a race of thralls inside her kingdom was rising up and winning battle after battle. The IFS on their ships display demands for war and retribution. Despite coming from a remote area that most merchants wouldn't even consider shipping to, they all described the primates as amiable and kind, often requesting a quick examination before sending them on their way. She gave it some consideration, finding it unsettling that these primates were allowing her allies' merchant to pass while they were waging war on her people. All the main resources that her empire's colonies supplied, including the food ships, had also stopped operating. Although there is more than enough food in the empire's center to survive for millennia, nobility like her detest rationing. A censor officer said rapidly, Ma'am, we have incoming arrival signatures, count at 45. She moans. Her station is all she has instead of a fleet. Yes, a strong, well-armed station. It's still a stationary, unchanging goal. Turn on the secondary and tertiary generators and fully charge the shields. She growled back, her eyes reading the names of the ships entering her sector of the Empire. Her teeth clenched as she recognized some believed lost passengers from the Ripper fleet that disappeared a month ago to the battle treadnought, that was a component of the last war fleet that lost connection to authority, and send a data burst to Central Command for immediate reinforcement. A commonality in the naming method caught her attention. Every ship these opponents took over was renamed with a sarcastic remark about her empire, and every ship belonging to her people was renamed with an insult to her empire. This was a thrall race retaliating, not a revolution. However, where and why did it come from? We're being hailed, ma'am. Confused, the communications officer said, go through with it. I'll assess my opponent's worth by looking into their eyes. She replied as she saw the image of a primate, which the computer recognized as a seated thrall race from PS 328C, flash on her terminal, to Admiral Vostrium Vol. Juolman Kiosmus, greetings. I am Admiral Kenji Watanabe, and I am under order to deliver the United Earth's terms to your Emperor. We grow tired of your arrogance and inability to put up a fight, the Primate stated, grinning broadly. We are prepared to reconcile, the Primate said, sounding worn out and indifferent in both tone and voice. It is audacious of you to think that you can beat us. The forces you have been eliminating are not even fully formed fleets, but rather tiny divisions from our core forces. She snarls back, saying how much she already detests it and finds it annoying that her position seems to be so unimpressed. I will give you credit for reaching this far. It's impressive for you backwater monkeys to have taken out seven fleets. Really? The primate inquired, looking surprised and perplexed. You think it would be difficult for us to kick your ass into space dust. Even though you reverse engineered it, I will still congratulate you on figuring out space travel and fast forward technology. But stop trying to hide your intentions, give up, and I will personally see to it that your species is treated fairly and ethically as honored thralls rather than as a common grunt. She said, 
not intending to keep such pledges. Her gaze flickers to the central countdown for the reinforcement fleet, their arrival vector obscured by the moon next to her station. Whoa, that sounds so delicious, the primate says, directing someone to get off the screen. Before disconnecting the hail, it says, call in the rest of the fleets, it looks like we are doing this the hard way. Her enraged eyes widen, was she just disregarded? Her tactical display began to beep, alerting her to the growing number of arrival signatures that were pinging into existence. As their combat line got broader, the number of ships coming in from the same vector as the primates increased gradually. The Count reached her reinforcement, and her heart began to beat faster and faster. Her command was given in a little panic. We are going to engage an invasion force, data burst central. As her request was going to be fulfilled, the station rocked. Madam, our long-range transmitter was just taken out, said the engineering officer. Two kinetic strikes from their flagship occurred milliseconds apart. Her gaze returned to the tactical monitor, where an armada of 400 ships stood idle in her sector's emptiness. The range and weaponry of each of the primate spacecraft was considerably more than she could have anticipated. Even though they were only half the size of her people, she took a deep breath, her thoughts racing not for honor, but for survival. The repulsive idea of caving in to the primate's demand sent shivers down her spine. Madam, they're hailing us once more, the communications officer said, obviously rattled by the monkey's undeveloped accuracy and firepower. She nodded and bided her time until the primate's image appeared once again. Deciding to speak first, she interrupted the ape, saying, You've made your point, monkey. I can see now why you don't fear us. Unable to believe she was going to make such a treacherous promise, she gulped. But the mighty golden armada of the throne world will not suffer any damage from your weapons, and they will destroy you, unless you have a noble speaking on your behalf on your ship. The primate remarked, the golden armada, as it pulled up a rudimentary data storage device and swiped its finger over it. I saw 500 ships here, the Golden Armada, mostly super cruisers, backed by the Hallow, a powerful orbital ring around your homeworld that is heavily armed and armored, it inquired. She gave a slow nod. Yes, but let me explain. We don't need to destroy your empire, thus we won't be going into your home solar system. The primate spoke while flashing a little, pitying grin. See, our goal is to force you to comply with our requests. It was much too chilly to be a lie when it threatened to kill everything in that space sector by deploying a superweapon into your home star system if you disobeyed. She became pale. She had not anticipated such a direct and forthright reply. Since you are the Empress's sister, we have chosen you to be our messenger. Here's the thing, however either elimination or peace. And keep in mind that I took down your long-range transmitter using a simple weapon platform on one of our warships, so you can only imagine how precise our real big guns are. The primate put in a swift addition. Sinking onto her throne, she could not even begin to comprehend the thought of truly asking the Empire to acknowledge these monkeys as equals, never alone superior. She inhaled a trembling breath when the file finished its active recording at the height of an ape named Alexander and his conquest, and her hand nervously opened the file the Empire held on them. Her consciousness saw that they had attained a theoretical potential and that her race could not harvest them at their threshold. A war monstrous race that refrained from destroying itself via nuclear fission. Despite her intellect realizing the seriousness of the situation and the threat this monkey offered. Her resolve was disturbed, and she inhaled deeply and stared up determinedly. What terms do you use, human? With a broad grin, the primate said, not much. I'll transmit our demands now. 